Hey, welcome back, everyone. Got some more Age of Empires here for you. The map is Altai. I'm playing as the Abbasid Dynasty. My opponent, Frack, is also playing as the Abbasid Dynasty. Pretty rare to get mirror matches. I mean, it's just super rare to run into other uh, Abbasid players. And I'm going to assume that my opponent's going for a second town center build. I'm really liking Abbasid on Altai because of this nearby deer patch. I mean, th this deer hunt right here is so handy. You can just put your second town center right here, and uh, the deer are just so convenient. They're such a good food source. So I assume that's what my opponent's going to go for. Me, I'm going to delay my second town center just slightly just a little bit because I want to try getting out one or two camel archers from a archery range and seeing what damage I can do with them. I'm not really sure this is my first time doing it. Uh, I'm not sure what I can afford or uh, how fast the attack can come, but we're going to give it a try. Uh, right now we're grabbing up sheep off the map with our scout but I need to use my scout to get to the front of my opponent's base. I need to identify where I'm going to attack. Really, I've got, I've got a little bit longer. I have more time than it seems. Uh, I need to age up, then I need to build an archery range, then I need to produce a camel archer, and then I need it to run across the map. So, that's going to be a bit of time. I can still send my scout around the map looking for sheep. Oh! Oh, I miss out on all these sheep. Oh, I didn't even notice them. Oh, what a shame. That was a good sheep patch right there. Ugh. One thing I did notice in my uh, attempt here to make camel archers as quickly as possible is I'm pretty much out of wood when I age up to uh, the feudal age. This is when I could build an archery range, but I'm actually only at 70... 80 wood by the time it rolls around. The issue being, I need to research wheelbarrow and I need to put a house down. So it's pretty expensive wood-wise. Uh, maybe I could have taken, yeah, I think I needed to take my villagers off of wood maybe a little earlier, or maybe transfer one of my villagers from food to wood. Hard to say. But here comes the first camel archer. It looks like we're producing it. And now we're identifying where we're going to attack. We've correctly identified that our opponent is going for a second town center. Once this stone drops below 1200, he's ready to go. So he's actually responding a little slow here. Looks like he's grabbed, or he might be grabbing a little bit of extra stone. Oh, no, okay. I thought he might be getting it down to 1150 stone because then you can make a arrow emplacement on like an outpost or a defensive structure, but it doesn't look like that's what he's going for. It looks like he just accidentally overmined his stone. And look, he's putting it down on the deer camp here, but his deer camp is actually at the front of his base. And that's really unfortunate for him because that means he's, he's really exposed here in the front. And I can bring my camel archer straight to the front of his base and start sniping his villagers. So that's what we're going to do. He's spending time building this town center. These five villagers are occupied building it. And it's only five villagers. Usually I send eight, uh, eight villagers to build my town center. So here's my camel archer ready to go. Scout's giving good vision. We're going to close the distance and start shooting. Three shots, four shots, five shots, and that's one dead villager. So now we're going for some more. I'm trying to target fire them down, although I do make a quick little misclick here. I take a shot on this one and then I switch over. Whoops. Let's focus this one down. And now the town center is going to finish and we need to run because he's going to garrison everyone inside the town center. Fortunately, my camel archer makes it around the corner and he loses vision of my unit. Down here, I'm actually using a archer that I produced to snipe down his villagers. And behind all of this, I'm starting construction on my town center. So you can see I'm a little behind in timing, but I have killed three villagers so far. And there's one really injured villager in there, and I really want to snipe that villager down. And so I'm trying to think how I can do this. And my thought was, well, what if I send my scout in first, he tanks one or two shots from the town center, and then we just get like 
the archer and the camel archer. Really, I just need the camel archer to get a shot on this villager. So I should just send in the scout and the camel archer. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to micro this out. I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's send in, yeah, the scout. And now I'm going to send in my archer units. There we go. And we get another villager. Okay, so that's four villagers. And then by the time he garrisons everyone, we're out. Cool. So we got four villagers, but our town center was slightly delayed. And it looks like I'm not even producing villagers from it. So that's a little embarrassing. Uh, I think with all that micro to get that one villager, I probably could have been making more villagers. Yeah, this needs to get producing. This is really embarrassing that I don't have this going. It's the whole reason I got this second town center. There we go. Okay, finally. Over here, I'm identifying more targets for attacks. If I can snipe down another villager, that'd be great. And this is a great combination of damage. The scout, the archer, and the camel archer do just a perfect amount. You'd be surprised how quick they can take down a villager. Honestly, just the scout and the camel archer are quite good together. I'm going to try and split my forces off from each other so he has to hunt each of them down. But it looks like he's going to get the camel archer, and he's making a lot of horsemen. Looks like he went double stables and a single archery range. And when I identify all of this, I decide to put down a barracks. Because it looks like he's going to go a lot of cavalry. Trying to save whatever troops I have. Getting the scout home. Trying to scare off his scout. And now I'm just going to try and hold on to a little bit of the map. He has a lot of horsemen, so this archer is pretty much useless. I need to get this barracks down, uh, start producing some spearmen, get that veterancy upgrade. And I do get my blacksmith up, and I'm actually going to get a uh, steeled arrow. And now I'm transitioning to the castle age. I really want, well, I'm beginning my transition to the castle age. I'm putting 10 villagers on gold taking a lot off of wood and we're gathering up a lot of these different uh, food sources fortunately we're walling this off so i feel good about this area we've got deer and we've got berries these villagers are pretty much i mean these seven villagers are all going to be working non-stop so that's a good food source not really harassable by my opponent feeling good we even kept one villager on stone, just in case we need some stone walls or we want to put down uh, an emplacement. That's what I'm actually going to do up here with this uh, this outpost. I'm going to scare off the horseman or the uh, scout, but up here he's actually done a counterattack with his horsemen. So remember, I've killed four villagers. Let's see how many he gets here. So I think that's two villagers. So I'm going to lose three and maybe a fourth right here. This villager is really close. So right there, he's pretty much even things out. Granted, my villagers were collecting for a little bit longer, so I guess I came out ahead there. But it is nice getting to see his army. Uh, we're going to be producing spearmen and protecting different areas of our base. Fortunately, the only parts that are really exposed are... I mean, this is pretty well blocked off, and I don't even think he's going to scout down there. It's really just this berry bush that's a little exposed. So I'd like to maybe get a wall down, or even just across these two uh, forests here. That'd be nice. We get the outpost down, and we're going to give it an arrow slits emplacement. Mostly just hoping to take this spot in the future. The, the center of Altai can be really helpful to capture. Uh, it's surprising how, how much map control you can get just from this area. And here come more of his forces. I should probably retreat inside this outpost. And he has enough horsemen that it looks like he could probably burn this outpost down. But I think he realizes that it's maybe better to, uh, maybe it's better to capture or, or to, to try and knock down some of my villagers that are out on the map. Sadly, with only one barracks, I'm just not producing enough spearmen. Finds the villager down here. And yeah, again, I really like this from my opponent. Rather than burning down the, the structures, he's just looking to target down villagers. And if he's going to burn anything down, it's probably going to be this outpost. But he sent his horsemen around. I suspect they're going to come to my berry patch shortly. In fact, yeah, there's the outpost that spots them. So they're, they're about to strike here. This poor villager's done for. He's just getting lots of these random villager kills around the map. I have a few spearmen here. I should really retreat these villagers. 
He's wisely uh, sending the camel archer forward. Looks like I accidentally grouped my uh, villagers in there. But we are scoring a few horseman kills, and I decided to target the camel archer, thinking he might be looking away. But he does a pretty good job microing this camel archer. Fortunately, I've got even more coming out. Just this one camel archer and these spearmen can do a lot. I think, yeah, I target down the, uh, the camel archer. Fortunately, he doesn't head north. I have these villagers up here gathering from deer. You can see just how effective a camel and a few spearmen are against this mass horseman ball. Because the camel unease from the uh, camel archer reduces the damage of the horseman. Look at it. There were maybe like eight horsemen here a moment ago. And now there's only three. I'm going to try and save my spearmen because they're very valuable right now. And we make it up to the third age. Opponent makes it to the third age as well. I'm kind of excited. This has been different from my other games. Uh, usually it's ram rushes and just um, English opponents just tearing me apart but this one's different this one is we're both in the castle age we're both going to duke it out this is going to be a longer macro game and now I'm kind of catching my breath I'm saying to myself what, what do we need let's fix our economy a little bit we've got a little bit too much food we need more wood we've got more villagers queued I really don't need so many villagers gathering from these sheep that we had. Let's get these villagers maybe. Looks like I'm sending them either to this food or, oh, okay, looks like I'm going to wall this section off and then start gathering this uh, gold. So that's good. We're definitely going to need gold now that we're into the castle age. But, man, I need less food, more, more wood. That'd be great. And it looks like I am... I was able to get some more production down. So it looks like we're up to two of everything. Two archery ranges, two stables, two barracks. And the barracks should really just be making spearmen, but I mean, can't hurt to have a few man-at-arms. As for my opponent's base, we're still somewhat in the dark. We know that in the Castle Age, he could make a lot of knights. So it's important that we get a good amount of spearmen involved in our army. But it looks like I'm mostly just trying to make an aggressive force. I'm trying to force him into crossbowmen and spearmen with my knights and um, man-at-arms. And there's a market down here. It looks like my opponent was considering going some sort of trade wing here. Though if he was, he probably would have walled this section off. Instead, my scout is getting to see exactly what's going on here. I think I'm going to send these archers down to try and take out this villager. I'm spotting veteran camel archers. Looks like he got the veterancy upgrade for his uh, his camel archers. Mine are still just normal camel archers. And it looks like he built a battering ram. I'm up against the Abbasid. They can just make siege units when they need to. Probably going to lose this outpost unless I send my forces that way. Yeah, I could probably get these units moving. But I don't think I realize the ram is attacking the outpost until it actually starts smacking away at it. And it only needs five hits to take down this outpost. Unless I gave it the, um, the fortification, it's just going to go down so fast. And look at this force. Horsemen, veteran horsemen, veteran spearmen, and the veteran camel archers. I'm not sure how it's going to do against my man-at-arms, but it is going to be effective against my knights and my horsemen. Send my cavalry to knock out the battering ram. Looks like I'm house blocked. Unfortunate. Really need to get more houses. Down here, we're looking to see what damage we can do, but it looks like he's responding with his horsemen, so these archers don't really have a chance. These knights up here, I do spot another market going down. We should really target this villager and then try to get into his um, economy. Okay, good. Looks like I target the villager, and now we're going to... We're going to try and get some villager kills over here. Meanwhile, we're just kind of duking it out over here. These, this, I'm going to win this. These, these man-at-arms are going to be doing work. Even though there's these crossbowmen, I've got the right units. Okay, here come the horsemen and uh, spearmen. That's kind of a problem. Fortunately, on the back side of this, I am microing my uh, knights around. Yeah, we're going to target some villagers down. 
These are some important villager kills. So that was one, two, three, four. And they're uh, basically two-shotting these villagers because we gave them the uh, melee attack upgrade. My god, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow, we got a lot of kills there. But he has a really good anti-cavalry uh, army composition. Oh, he's, he's running over here. He's got quite the forces. These crossbowmen are just not effective against these forces. They really need man-at-arms. Some mass man-at-arms would be good there. And I get a few more villager kills here, but mostly we just have to run. The camel archers are really uh, punishing. Looks like we're getting some shots on these uh, veteran spearmen, but really this outpost needs to get a... Um, it needs to get a, a spring alden placement to be effective. That said, on the backside of all this, we, we were able to do some economic damage. We're setting up more raids. We're getting more upgrades. It looks like we just queued up a slew of upgrades. We spent a lot of our gold. But we need more forces. And we are... Our economy's looking a little weird. We've got not too many on food, maybe too much on gold, and a lot on stone. It looks like I'm trying to get a keep up in the center of the map. It looks like I'm hoping to use this force to come forward and protect my villagers as I get down a keep. This knight is not going to have a good time. These spearmen are just so effective against them, but these veteran archers are doing good damage versus these spearmen. That's what I like to see. Here come the camel archers. They're going to, it looks like, try to discourage the keep from going down. Back here, it looks like I'm just trying to find... Ah, uh, it looks like these forces just get parked there. Need to send, yeah, these units in. Run, villagers, run. The horsemen, unfortunately, are very effective versus them, but we're doing great work on the camel archers. These are expensive units, so that's really good. And the camel archers, they're going to be really effective versus my spearmen, but if my spearmen can get on top of them, it's game over. So we're trading pretty evenly here. I'm going to send in another group of units. Oh, the man-at-arms are just so good. They're just not dying. At first, I thought this keep didn't have a chance. And he's got even more forces back here. Ah, I need to send these units in. Okay, good. These units down here, it looks like we're running into some of his reinforcements. And these man-at-arms are going to stay alive for a long time. Yeah, he's just kind of tickling them. And we're getting good, uh, getting good counter kills here. So at least his units are distracted here. He can't reinforce up here again. So now we're sending more villagers in. We're going to take out all of these units, and we're going to finally finish this keep. Awesome. We're trying to send more of our cavalry in for quick villager snipes. Hopefully I micro this somewhat well. Looks like I'm just riding in. Oh, I'm just riding right through. I think I told them to just go straight into the uh, wood line, but it looks like he's got a crossbowman here in the wood line. Oh, if we can target a few of these villagers down, that'd be great. Okay. This isn't too bad, but I need to focus fire. This is why focus firing with your knights when they get into the enemy lines is important. Otherwise, they'll just take random shots at villagers passing by them. Okay, we're getting good kills. I didn't realize how many villager kills we were getting back here. I just kind of set him on attack and let him do his thing. We're getting a few more walls down. Let's see. I'd like to see me get some more walls down. It looks like I'm just kind of plugging holes with units. I'm sending small forces around the map as much as I can. And I want to knock down this outpost. I think it's giving him way too good vision. And I don't like how little I have here. So I think I'd like to maybe get a wall or at least an outpost just up in this area just to give me some more vision. It looks like I'm sending a single villager down to build this keep, which I don't really like to do. I don't like to just send one villager to build a keep. It just takes way too long to construct. But it's a welcome surprise when later on in the match you realize, oh, holy crap, I 
ended up with a keep down here. We're checking out his forces. He's making... Okay. Horsemen, Cam Rogers, and he's finally mixing in some man-at-arms, which, if I've kept my foot on the crossbowman pedal, shouldn't be a problem. It looks like I actually have a decent amount. Oh, look at this. These are just regular camel archers. They're not even veteran, and we're just sniping down villagers as quickly as we can. Ouch. Looks like he's already gotten two relics. I think when I saw that, I realized I needed to get back on the relic game. So I'm starting to grab as much as I can. I'd like to see me micro my, yeah, get these imams moving. There we go. Looks like we're grabbing R2 right there. And with this keep here, there's no reason we can't grab this sacred site. Sending the battering ram forward, we'd like to knock out his keep. But then up here, looks like I left my group of uh, units here. and He's brought a lot. This is almost his entire army, it looks like. So many camel archers. It's such a good composition, such a mix of units. I really need to back these units up, build a wall here maybe. This keep, yeah, it's defending the, it's defending the um, sacred site, but it's not gonna block his units from just running into my base. And I maybe should not be engaging with these units here. He's just got so many units here. This is really nasty. And of course down here, these units aren't doing anything. I need to get the battering ram in and these units back home. Oof, losing villagers here. Should probably retreat these villagers. Okay, I'm retreating these, but they're all getting cut down. Yeah, these villagers need to run. But we do have a, a mangonel. Oh, I'm worried it's just gonna get targeted down by his units. He has so many man-at-arms. Oh, it's just rolling right into them. Oh, what a donation. I wondered where my mangonel went. <laughs> oh, but his forces are splitting up. He's losing track of his units. Yes, this keep is getting great kills back here. And it looks like we might be able to clean this up, especially with all of these crossbowmen and archers. The archers are somewhat effective versus the, uh, the camel archers. This Imam was either trying to grab this, I think he was trying to grab this relic and then sit on the sacred site. Incredibly, we get the keep up. Over here, we've unfortunately ran into a wall, but we're trying to burn our way through it. I think this Imam is gonna go capture this sacred site. We are going up to the Imperial Age, which is honestly really dangerous because I don't think I've really remade my army. And for all I know, he remade his army on the back of all of that. Oh, poor mom. He doesn't have a chance. I am starting to mix in some siege units, which I like. Um, the thing is, I'd really like mangonels. He doesn't really have any spring alds, so there's not really much of a need for me to make spring alds. And as for the counterweight trebuchet that's on the way, I'm not even sure if I have a target for the counterweight trebuchet. He is putting up stone walls, so it'll be helpful when he uh, gets stone walls up along his base, but I haven't really seen a keep from him. And that's typically the target that uh, trebuchets go for. We finished off this wall, although we're starting to do a chop through over here, so that's not so good. And this is what I meant about him remaking his army and me not. That is a huge force. This is a scary moment for me. I'm gonna slow it down to talk this through. I'm probably gonna lose these villagers. I need to retreat these villagers. Probably need to retreat these villagers. Yeah, I'm sending them off. It's so many, it's such a, a, a variety of units here. Camel archers, spearmen, man-at-arms, a bunch of horsemen as well. We're coming along the backside to try and deal with him. Springald's even getting in on the mix. But man, I don't know how we're gonna hold here. I at least have these units gain involved and we are retreating villagers. Once this starts firing at his units, that'll be good. But yeah, we could easily lose a lot of villagers here. Okay, the villagers mostly slip through. Looks like we lose maybe five or six of them right there. And now my units are kind of misrallying. I need to rally them closer to my base. Ugh, and I need to get these units involved. He's running further in. Down here, again, keep losing my Imam to uh, his random units. Now we're kind of duking it out. 
again, these units are probably misrallying. Need to send them forward. I realize that he's duking it out with my military. Let's just send my villagers back to work. Although over here, you can see his camel rider is, or his camel archer is taking shots at my villagers. Yeah, I'm gonna lose a lot of villagers up here if I don't retreat them or do something with them. I'm at 88, but just look at my villager count drop. It's like every second, 84, 83, yep. But that might have been it. Maybe we can stop the bleeding right there at 83. And we are getting out some powerful units. You can see he, he just didn't really have ranged units besides these camel archers. And the camel archers just lose to a pure ranged uh, army. Oof, 80, 79. Losing way too many villagers here. And I really need to start reproducing them. Okay, Mangonel's getting involved. So are some hand cannoneers. Looking good. think that's it. Okay, remaking lots of villagers. We're down to 77. Let's check the blacksmith. Looks like we got all of our two level two armor, level two attack. We're looking good there. We've got two relics. Looks like the last one's just hanging out here. At least we're denying it from my opponent. We have two of the sacred sites, so we're generating a lot of gold. Let's check income. Looks like he's ahead in food, but I'm way ahead in gold. And gold can let me make really expensive units. That's why I'm spamming out a lot of um, a lot of these elite units like knights, crossbowmen, man-at-arms, and I'll probably put in a lot of um, hand cannoneers as well. We can also make siege units, and we're getting we're getting all sorts of upgrades. I'm even getting tithe barns. That's just gonna give me even more income. And here we're duking it out. Interestingly, the Mangonel does bonus damage against range units, so I think it might actually be extra effective versus Camel Archers, now that I think about it. I wondered why his Camel Archer army just melted here. I mean, look at all these camels on the ground. I think it's the Mangonel. Wow. It's doing so much damage to the Camel Archers. Wow, look at them go. The mangonel is so effective. I think at this point, it's just gonna be, yep, a sacred site, slow victory, slow siege. My opponent's just making camel archers and he just does not seem to have the gold income that I have. So I think I still have an economic advantage. Even though I really need more villagers. He decides to tap out here because I don't think he can deal with this large army. And I have mangonels. Mangonels just seem effective versus his camel archers. It was a really fun game. I liked the back and forth. Things looked a little dicey when his army attacked my base, but we held and it was a good response. Hoping for more games like that and hoping you'll tune in for them. Catch you next time.